So we created this constitutional republic, and the reason we did was we wanted the leaders and the people to all be under the same laws. In a lot of countries, the leaders are different from the people. They have different set of laws. They're kind of elitist at times. We wanted everyone being treated the same under our constitutional republic. One of our early leaders, one of our early presidents, helped frame our documents. He said, this is a government of laws, not of men. Men can't exempt themselves from laws. They are under law. So we have a constitutional republic, which is one form of a republic. So as you point out, that's one of the forms of well, government. Well, it's something that, you know, even as I'm reading this list, I'm, I'm seeing what a constitutional republic is and thinking, you know, our elected officials have not always done a good job with this. But, but even though we've not always had great elected officials, because there was a constitution that bound them by certain boundaries, they've not been able to go as far as maybe a dictator would in other nations or something of such nature. So after constitutional republic or republics in general, it points out there's an oligarchy. And an oligarchy is, throughout world history, it's an aristocracy, a group of leaders that they are the collective and they make all of the decisions, not necessarily elected. Uh, you then have anarchy. And it's interesting, and this, beside anarchy, it says, or revolutionary, and an anarchy is generally where people say, we want to do our own thing. We don't want the government telling us what to do. In fact, I don't want anybody telling me what to do. It's my life. I have the right to do what I want with it. I should have the freedom to be the person I want to be. The problem is, it becomes a very subjective system of morality and subjective system of right and wrong. And so... Who gets to determine what's really right and wrong in this? And, and actually, who gets to be the leaders or who gets to determine, well, no, that's my property. No, I think it's mine now. Well, in, in anarchy, it's really the law of the shark or the bear or the lion. It's the biggest and the strongest and the meanest, which is why in this it says it's either anarchy or revolutionary because every anarchy has led to or been ended by revolutions where people fought for rights because, well, this man's taking, or that woman, or this, this group is taking away my rights, and I want my rights. So anarchy has almost always led to revolution. It's never really been successful, but it's where the people say, well, I want to do whatever I want to do. I don't want anybody else telling me what I can and can't do. And, and really, this is something that has not been historically successful. Well, it's something that we see described in the Bible three separate times. It says, every man did that which was right in his own eyes.